Welcome to another exciting episode of Motorcycle.com TV. Wait, it's not really TV, it's YouTube, huh? We've got Tom Roderick, ladies and gentlemen, back from, back from retirement. He couldn't stay away. Last time we saw Tom, he was right, well, no, but he went on the launch for the Yamaha XSR900 back in 2016, which is a pretty sweet bike. It's an 847cc triple, which made us think it would be a cool thing to test alongside the 2019 Monster 1200S. The real excuse for this ride is the, the long-awaited Indian FTR 1200, which is uh, one of the most anticipated bikes of the last couple of years. I got to ride one in Baja, I think, back in March, but we finally got our hands on bikes to actually ride this time. And not on just one, but two, because we got the FTR 1200S model, and we have the base version over here. 15,500 versus 13,500 dollars. The S has an IMU, so it's got lean sensitive traction control and lean sensitive braking, cornering. Uh, it's also got adjustable suspension at both ends and a 4.3 inch touch screen TFT, which is kind of cool if you're into that blue phone, Bluetooth, blue hook, your telephone up to that. And it tells you, you know, who's calling and stuff. Uh, the base version just has a round, uh, one round instrument like the XSR does. It's kind of more old school and kind of more in keeping with the style of the bike, I think. But if you require the touchscreen and all, you've got the option. That one's got just, uh, it's got sack suspension, as does the S model, but it's, it's not adjustable. You recognize it by the black fork tubes opposed to the gold ones. Can you tell us about, about the new Monster a little bit? Or I should sure we talk can. about that later? I can talk about it right now. We'll Why talk not? about it now. It's red, as you can see. Yeah. This one is the S model, which varies from the base model by $3,000. What you get for the extra $3,000 are Olean suspension, different wheels, and bigger brakes. Same 1200cc monstrous honking V-twin beneath that gas tank and beside the frame rails there. And uh, yeah, that's the Monster 1200S in a nutshell. Tom, do you have anything to add? Uh, John, it's just nice being back riding motorcycles <laughs> I don't own. <laughs> and in accordance with what you said, yeah, if there was one bike I wanted to ride this year that I don't get to ride, you know, because I don't do this any much, yeah. uh, uh, full time, uh, would be this one. Absolutely. Yeah. Looking forward to riding this FTR because it is a cool bike and all I've done is seen pictures and read about it so far. Yes, we're going to tear around the roads up here around Angeles Crest, Mount Wilson a little bit. Uh, Evans, do you have anything to add to that? Right on. Right here we go. All right, let's go. again it's been, a, it's been a nice ride all day there's the part where we stare in the sun and just try to figure out which of these motorcycles wins which one wins tommy my personal favorite is going to be the least expensive motorcycle here which is the yamaha ninety five hundred dollars uh the bang for buck smile for mile that thing's got it you're going to say oh tell me it doesn't have cruise control and i'm going to say so what i think that's the bike to have <laughs> can i see that we've really missed having you around here <laughs> Evans, what's your favorite motorcycle here? Well, what I'm going to weasel a little bit and say it's hard for me to choose a favorite because 
they all do their jobs so differently. The XSR is the, uh, the eager little puppy of punch. You get it on a super tight road, and it is just, you know, it's about to wet itself, it's so happy. It's fun to toss around, it's lightweight, it's maneuverable, I love the engine. But then, I get on the Ducati, and when you get it on a road where it can really stretch its legs, I'm like, ooh, okay, this is the motorcycle I want. Um, it's the sportiest bike here. Um, it has all of the, the sport bike cred. It's got the sportiest riding position. I feel the, the, the sportiest suspension, the sportiest handling. Get it on, on like the Angeles Crest with these nice sweeping corners. Um, even in the tight stuff, it was pretty fun, but it, it really liked places where you could get on the gas. Um, and that brings me to the FTRs. And I really want to talk about how excited I was when they announced this bike. And now that I'm on it, I don't know if I've built it up too much or what, but it's not a bad bike. It's, I'm just not as excited by it. One of the neat things I do like about it is the engine has two different characters. There's down low, it's got the grunt of the torque, and I found myself in the tighter sections running a gear higher than I thought I would, and just letting it you know, chug its way out of the corners, and I, I really like that. But then in the mid-range, it sort of gets a little vibey and doesn't feel as powerful. Then you get up in the top end, the engine takes off again. And so um, you can ride it a couple of different ways. But at the same time, it's, uh, it's heavier steering, you know, which makes sense. Look at the size of the wheels. It's the heaviest bike here and you feel the weight, uh, both accelerating and slowing down. So I'm not saying it's a bad bike, I'm just saying it's, it's not necessarily the bike that I like the most. Did that answer your question, John? Uh, are you done? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Troy, what's your favorite bike? As a styling exercise, which one I like to look at the most, the Indians. By far, I think, are the best Absolutely. looking bikes of the bunch here. So if I was gonna ride Twisty Roads, I would take the Ducati. If I was actually going to buy one with my own money, which is very limited, it would be the Yamaha because it is the least expensive here. But I'm not going to buy any of these bikes, so it's just a matter of which one is the most fun to ride, right? I don't know which one is my favorite, honestly. I like things about each of them. I love the torque from the Indian. It's got this character to it. That the others don't have, but I like the sportiness of the Ducati and I like the pep of the Yamaha. It just takes off and goes. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's not a simple question to mm -hmm. answer. Mm -hmm. Well, I was super excited about the FTR, you know, being on the sidelines as a non-moto journalist any longer. Um, definitely excited to ride that. Today proved that, yeah, it's just it's a little long, it's a little heavy. It's just not quite up to what I had put in my mind, sort of like you were saying, Evans. Ridden alone without these other bikes around, again, it'd be fine like most motorcycles are. Um, but, you know, it's got, like, I was surprised that the foot pegs are actually kind of put back. I thought they are going to be, like, right below me, like Harley kind of likes to do. Uh, they're not as far back as the Ducati here. I've got a pretty good bend in my knee on this guy. So comfort-wise, I like the comfort of the FTR over this one, but I still, you know, appreciated the seating position on the Yamaha more. So John, I got the feeling that you didn't agree with our assessment. I don't agree with you guys at all. Number one, it's a street tracker. It's built for going around town and being in an urban environment more. The Indian's so, so cool. I actually didn't think it would work as well on these tight roads as it, as it did. I was curious about those tires. This super tight stuff with like tar snakes all over the place. What I'm saying is it's a first year American motorcycle, it's, or sport bike. It's Indian's first sport bike. And I expected it would have some serious flaw or one, two or three flaws. And I don't find any, any flaws in that motorcycle. The way the power is delivered, the way you come off second gear corners and it has a big wump of like 70 pound feet of torque at like 3000 RPM. It has even more down low than the Monster does. And D Ducati's had quite, quite a bit of time to perfect that thing. True, and, yeah. but I wouldn't call that a sport bike. I would call what? this guy a sport bike. Well, it hangs with that guy. No, no, not really. Yeah, I think no, it does. No, no. I think it does. I don't think so. Let's, let's, let's go back again. The other American company that made a streetable flat tracker-ish model, uh, I will not say names to protect the guilty. Harley Davidson! It was the initials are Harley Davidson? It was um, <laughs> less than an optimal motorcycle. It's I'll put it that way. Yep. This is a different company's take on a streetable flat tracker, and it's badass. For a first effort. 
For any effort. For a streetable flat for tracker? For any effort, yeah. For any effort. For a streetable flat tracker, this Indian is cool. It does what it was designed to do, but <laughs> yes. it, it, it didn't knock my socks off. Exactly. I, I like the bike, but of, of this assemblage of motorcycles here, um, it, it wouldn't be my first choice. What would be your first choice? KTM 790 Duke. <laughs> <laughs> That's not here. We're, we're not testing parallel twins. <laughs> it's a heart and a wallet thing. Um, the Ducati really, really pulls my heartstrings the right way. But uh, I get on that Yamaha and think about all the extra money I had saved and torn. I've always loved the monster, but I've, I've seen it before. I've seen this movie before. And uh, the Indian is so fresh and new. I guess they keep turning out the monsters because people keep buying them. Huh? I mean, it's kind of hard. That's when, fine. It's kind of hard when Galuzzi comes out with the original monster and it looks so good from the start. Yep. If you really change that basic silhouette much, mm -hmm. you're gonna get a lashing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not Ducati's fault. It's just you know, the mm -hmm. monster is an iconic bike. So mm -hmm. what do you do? Uh, uh, I I think if it's me, I'm gonna buy something a little bit more original. But that's just. Me, um, if you if you had to go somewhere, these are not really made to be traveling motorcycles much. But if, if you wanted to sport tour, here you it comes. To throw some stuff on the back. Mm -hmm. Which 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 of these would you would you prefer? I don't know, John. Which one has cruise control? Oh, it's funny that you brought that up. <laughs> both the Indian, the base model, which is only thirteen five, has built cruise control, and the the S model also, of course, has cruise control. So if you, if you found yourself having to go to you know, San Francisco or somewhere stuck on the 101 for three or 400 miles, that baby there. The Indian has a couple things that I might want to, you know, improve upon, but for a first year effort, I'm, I'm super impressed. And the thing is, it makes, it makes 112 horsepower and it makes about 80 foot pounds of torque. And if you look at the torque curve, it's a little bit above the Ducati at first, then it dips below the Ducati. Then it catches back up to the Ducati all the way to like, 8600 rpm where the ducati are both making like 112 horsepower and that's where the indian's done the, the ducati revs on another couple thousand rpm and gets to 132 horsepower so that tells me that indian may have left a little bit in the tank for a, a future sportier version of that and that's going to be a super impressive bike too I, i'm thinking but you know, if we're talking about the potential for an R model, yeah, that, that would be pretty yeah, cool. Maybe, maybe yeah. a sport version of that with 17-inch wheels. And then we'll have to revisit this. We threw in the XSR just for the wild card. I haven't been on one since the FZ09 two or three years ago, and they, they never really did quite get the suspension sorted on that, or the fueling was better, but it was never quite right. And on the XSR, they got everything dialed. I mean, this thing loves to go around corners and the fueling's really good too. And it, it makes 102 horsepower. When I uh, pitched uh, Yamaha on uh, including the XSR in the, the shootout, I said that I wanted to show what people would be giving up uh, with the less expensive bike, what they, you know, what, what they would have and what they would have to give up when compared to these more expensive bikes. And ironically, it's come in and performed really well, surprisingly well. And hats off to Yamaha. I'm, I'm really surprised that the XSR, I, I expected it to be like a close third and, say, well, and be making excuses, well, it costs so much less and it's got less displacement and all that. But really, um, it's either first or second in my book right now, depending on my mood. Well, if you think about it too, you might be giving up cruise control on the Yamaha, but you do have adjustable suspension on this $9,500 bike, which you don't have on the $13,500 uh, Indian. Plus, you can actually get to the screws on the top of the suspension to adjust it, where on the FTR, you gotta kinda almost remove the handlebars. So, you know, there's that little issue. I don't think I've ever seen you adjust any suspension in the whole time I've known you. I pay somebody to yeah, do that. There you go. <laughs> but um, the other thing that's cool about this Yamaha, it's got really excellent fit and finish, like brushed aluminum, colored tank with clear coat over it, and these cool little little de details all over it. It doesn't look like it doesn't look look like the cheap bike here Not when you inspect the, the so um the ftr wins i think that's it it's a wrap <laughs> i think we'll have to go to the scorecard on this one <laughs> if you like the video click on like if you don't like we'll try harder next time go to motorcycle.com to read the whole story <laughs>